Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Tammy Fonse, and I am a public information officer for the city of El Paso. And tonight we're going to be talking about the changes to our curbside recycling program. Um, we want to make sure that everyone understands that you are still able to recycle, but during this period where curbside recycling is temporarily suspended, you're, you're not going to be able to recycle um, from the convenience of, of your home um, at the curb. But um, recycling is still an option for you. I just want to make that really clear tonight. Um, our guest speakers tonight are Nick Ibarra, and he is our engineering division manager over operation. And our other guest speaker is Jesus Yamaguchi, and he is the operations manager for the collections division. Um, Nick is going to give you a quick presentation, and then afterwards, we're going to be able to ask questions. Um, I ask that you use the icon at the top of your screen. If you look up, you're going to see a little hand icon. If you press on that, that'll indicate to us that you have a question and we will call on you. You also have the option to use the uh, chat system, which is the icon next to the hand that looks like a text message. However, um, in the interest of allowing everybody to hear your question, we would prefer that you ask it verbally. But again, you do have the option to type your question and get a written response. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Nick, who again is our engineering division manager over operations. Uh, good afternoon. Um, my name is Nicholas Ivara. Uh, Tammy mentioned um, I'm the engineering division manager for environmental services, which oversees collections, the landfill, and our uh, clean El Paso divisions. Um, back in March, we were asked by uh, the city manager to determine uh, to provide an operational drawdown plan in case of staff shortages. And this is the presentation I'll be going through uh, for the to start the meeting. There are three areas of concern that we looked at when we were talking about the uh, drawdown plan uh, for staff uh, for short staff shortage. Uh, first of all, is the landfill, which is open to the city of El Paso private haulers and residential customers, and also the El Paso County all use the landfill. Our citizen collection stations, which have five drop-off sites throughout the city of El Paso, and our collections division, which is our trash and recycling collections. All three areas are, the our concern was always with our uh, CDL drivers for all three areas. Those are the, the the positions that we look at the most where we would have to draw down and, and move staff around in case there were some shortages from each division. <clears throat> Our curbside recycling program uh, suspension was decided based off of our staffing needs for a CDL uh, solid waste truck drivers. Um, a full staff would be at 85 truck drivers if we were able to maintain a full staff. Um, we decided that we would suspend the recycling program if our staff fell below 62 drivers. Currently, we're averaging about 60 drivers that are coming into work with an, an average of about 20, 25 drivers being out on a daily basis. Uh, due to uh, the COVID, um, FMLA, which is uh, injuries at work and, and different items like that, vacation, uh, um, sick leave. You know, there's a multitude of um, reasoning, but with the addition of COVID, it dropped our levels down to a place where we needed to, uh, we were making it work with bringing in drivers from different divisions, but you know, our drivers ended up working anywhere from 12 to 14 hours on a daily basis to ensure that we were able to maintain both uh, trash and recycling collections. and we were seeing an increase in accidents and and our drivers were very, getting worn out um, pretty much on a daily basis. So this was a determining factor that we're, we're going to suspend the recycling program. <clears throat> in uh, the previous town hall meetings, uh, many of the questions came uh, uh, came up were what are the um, the charges that we're getting on a monthly basis to our water bill? So I wanted to go through two of them really quickly, which were the, the majority of the questions in the last couple of meetings. First of all, is the great bin, great trash bin, nineteen dollar fee. What that fee covers, it's a, it's a bundled fee where it covers collections, both trash and recycling, uh, trash on a weekly basis as a state mandated, state mandated through a Texas ordinance, um, and recycling every other week. Recycling. This also includes uh, maintenance for our vehicles and fl fleet purchases on an annual basis to maintain our our fleet, our citizen collection stations that are are offered uh, you know, uh, through your water bill, just taking your water bill and your ID to any of our CCS sites and you could 
dispose of any additional trash you have from your your uh, your your houses and also without your water bill and without your ID you could take any extra recycling to any of our five CCS sites and drop it off there they'll let you in just if you're taking recycling without any like I mentioned water bill or ID helps fund our landfill um, our operations once again includes our, our our fleet and heavy equipment purchases at the landfill and once again fleet maintenance and replacement for our city vehicles and for all our ESD vehicles, which include all three divisions of Clean El Paso Collections and the landfill. And then there's the $5 environmental fee that is also included in your water bill. That that environmental fee actually, it, it the name is a, a bit misleading. Um, a lot of people assume that this goes to environmental services, but it actually covers environmental processes that aren't part of environmental service, uh, including code enforcement, uh, vector program, which is our mosquito sprays and uh, and uh, collection and um, mosquito sprays and trappings uh, throughout the city, our air quality program, street sweeping, median cleanup, park mowing and litter removing, alley paving and dust control, uh, dust mitigation, and uh, graffiti removal throughout the city. So the environmental fee covers a vast variety of additional programs that aren't related to environmental services. As I mentioned before, we have five citizen collection stations throughout the city. Um, we we accept any resident extra residential trash at these uh, facilities as long as you have your water bill and your ID. And then, if, like I mentioned before, if you're bringing recycling, um, you could enter the facility without either one. Just uh, let them know that you're bringing recycling. And as you might have seen earlier this week on the news, there there was a missing communication with some of our staff at the citizen collection stations about the amount of bins that you could take to our CCS sites. Uh, we've talked to our employees and let them know if you're bringing recycling and you're bringing multiple bins, because I know a lot of our our city uh, city are very neighborly and are helping out their, their neighbors by collecting the recycling and taking it to the CCS. We're allowing everybody, everybody bringing extra recycling bins to enter our facility and uh, dispose of any of the recycling there at our sites. Our CCS locations are, are listed below. We have our site in the Northeast at 4501 Hondo Pass, in the Mission Valley at 1034 Pendale, East side on 3510 Confederate, uh, Central at 2492 Harrison, and on the West side at 121 Atlantic. And our citizen collection stations operate from 8 to 4 p.m. Tuesday through Saturday. In addition, I know a lot of people are still having, after these presentations, we'll still have additional questions about collections, recycling, uh, hours of operation. So we do have an ESD call center and all, all questions can go through our call center at the phone number 212-6000 and they operate from eight to five Monday through Friday. And we'll be able to answer any of your environmental services questions. And we'll go into our, our question period. Thank you, Nick. Uh, again, I want to remind everyone, if you have a question, you're welcome to ask the question. Please use the icon at the top of the screen. It's a hand. It indicates that you have a question. You want to raise your hand, um, uh, please. And then if you are on a call, you don't have that option. So we would ask that if you are dialing in to this meeting instead of using um, the, the link, Go ahead and unmute yourself right now by use by pressing star six and ask us a question. We have three callers who dialed in. And so if you have a question, um, go ahead and unmute yourself by pressing star six and we will allow you to ask the first questions. And um, everyone else, I encourage you to use the hand icon so that we can call, call on you next. We're gonna give them just a few uh, minutes so that they can um, press star six. Go ahead. Yes, I have a question. What if we're elderly and we don't have a truck? Do we take our recycling bin to these places? Is there any special thing for elderly people? Um, currently, no, there aren't any collections that we're performing. Um, we asked that if you could store the material until the, the recycling program resumes. Um, in, until that point, I uh, asked that you break down your boxes in the bin so you could store it as much as possible. I've, I've come to find that, you know, a lot of a lot of material could fit in these bins as long as the boxes are broken down and 
everything in collapses, bottles, cans, uh, all the recyclable items. So if you can um, uh, hold on to the material until then, if you, you can't do that, uh, we ask that unfortunately you put it in our, the gray bin and it'll get landfilled until the program is resumed. Or if you have a garage or different storage options that you could use. And one last question, is there any estimate of when we think the recycling program will come back into effect? Uh, we're we're examining this every 30 days. So since we started December 1st, we're going to look at this at the end of the month to see what our, our staffing levels are at. The, the main reason for the suspension of the program, like I mentioned before, was due to the uh, uh, not having drivers. You know, we're, we've been out, uh, drivers out with a sick leave, uh, COVID, FM, FMLA. So we're examining based off uh, on the um, on our driver situation at the end of the month, and we'll be examining that every 30 days. Thank you, and I appreciate you guys having this this conference call. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have a um, participant by the name of uh, Frances Lada. She was unable to raise her hand, but she did indicate she wanted to ask. So, uh, Ms. Frances, if you can go ahead and ask your question. Okay, uh, yes, I have a question. Uh, you said that the $19 in our water bill, there is a bundle of between the uh, the great uh, the gray bean and the recycle bean. Is that correct? Yeah, yes, there's multiple um, items that gets paid for by the $19 um, collections, both the gray and the recycling, uh, fleet maintenance, um, our landfill operations, and clean El Paso, which is our, our uh, citizen collection sites. Okay, and now that we're that you are not going to be collecting, is that going to be reduced? Those nineteen dollars? Uh, no, no, it isn't. What you know, the, the only savings we're seeing as part of the the uh, suspension of the recycling program is the seventy eight hundred to eight thousand um, dollars processing fee weekly that we were paying uh, Friedman Recycling, because you know we 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 still have our drivers that are coming into work on a, a daily basis, which are picking up a uh, uh, trash. So we're really not seeing mm. the savings because we're still paying our drivers, and we're only saving about eight, seven, eight, seventy-eight to eight thousand uh, dollars a, seventy-eight hundred to eight thousand dollars a week. So it, it really isn't a huge savings that we're seeing here. It's mainly we're we're suspended the recycling program due to the, the insufficient number of drivers we have. Okay, and and sorry, I uh, one more question. Uh, so you said that you picked that, and then someone else recycled it, right? Um, sorry, I, I I couldn't hear that. I didn't. Yes, I was saying that you you mentioned like you are in charge of picking up the recycled bins, and then there is this other company that recycle that for you. Is that correct? Yes. 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 Okay. Nick, uh, is there a? I'm sorry, Miss Miss um, Judith. If I can um, clarify, Nick, she's saying we pick up the recyclable material. However, a separate company, the Freedmans, actually package it and send it off to get recycled. Yes, sorry, it, it was breaking up. My apologies. Yes, uh, we we our our responsibility is collecting the recycling um, during our our collections and what we collect at our citizen collection sites and all the materials transported uh, to uh, the Freedman Recycling Company, where they store it um, and uh, bundle the material and then. It's 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 up to their discretion where the material gets sold to. So that that's um, their responsibility. Our responsibility is just providing the material to the facility. And, and do they make a profit of that? Um, I, I'm not sure currently right now. I know they've been uh, there's been difficulties with the reduction of uh, recycling that is uh, taken uh, through the um, the reduction that the uh, due to the uh, the China um, changes in uh, acceptance of recycling ways. So. I'm not sure what their 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 profit rates are right now currently. Mm -hmm. it, well, it really it's like it, it's Judith. It really depends on the market for recycling, so it's challenging mm -hmm. for us to tell you what they're seeing right now because it does fluctuate. But um, mm -hmm. if you have further questions about that, we can certainly um, you can uh, send me your your um, email address through the chat system, and we can get back to you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Um, did you have a, a, another question? No, it's it's not a question, but a concern is like I'm being charged for picking up my recycled material and then someone else is making profit out of it. So uh, I don't know, it, it, it just doesn't seem fair. 
Para. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, up next, we have Nana. Nana, if you want to go ahead and unmute yourself, you've had your hand up for, for a little while. Yes, thank you. Um, I live in central El Paso, and I was wondering why the collection, uh, the citizen collection um, drop off points, why they require a water bill. I know that we're paying for that, but since people um, are, maybe they are renting a home and now they're depositing all their debris, their trash um, in the neighborhood. And if we allowed anybody to drop off at the citizen collection drop off points, I think that would help alleviate that. Uh, yes, I understand, but uh, the water bill is to, uh, you know, we do have a lot of surrounding cities, um, Fabens, Clint, uh, Vinton, San Elizario. And if we were not to have, um, the water bill helps us confirm that their customers as part of the system, that they're paying part of the, the $19 fee, which covers the, the, uh, the citizen collection site. So that's the, just a way for us to keep uh, track of that, to make sure we're only allowing our customers to come into those sites. Because if we were to open it up without a water bill, we would see an influx of uh, additional um, customers coming in that we wouldn't be sure if they were part of the uh, ESD uh, program that we're, uh, you guys pay for on a monthly basis. And I understand that. I understand you're trying to limit it, but why not just showing an ID, a, a El Paso ID with an El Paso address? Um, since I live central, I see so much um, dumping of mattresses and now cardboard and those kinds of things. And I just would rather have to deal, not deal with that and have people allowed to go there and maybe just show their driver's license. And, and I understand that too, but there is a, a lot of people that do have IDs that aren't currently paying for, for any of the services also right now. And then we, we'd have to well, verify where they where their their current status of living and, and different items like that. The water bill is a guarantee that we, we know that you're paying for our services and that we can let you uh, we let you into the facilities. Isn't our main purpose though to keep our city clean? Isn't our main purpose to keep all that debris off the cities to keep us safe? And I just feel like now that we don't have our recycle being picked up and most people are ordering online, we have cardboard thrown all over the place. And I would think safety would come first and keeping our city clean. And I would think that you all would encourage people to drop off their items at the collection agencies. Well, the items that you're mentioning, ma'am, you know, recycling boxes, cardboard and all that, you do not need a water bill to take those to the citizen collection sites. So um, you could take those without without showing an ID, without a water bill. So when it comes to different items like that, recyclables, they're all welcomed at our CCSs without a water bill and, a, and an ID. Um, if we were to start collecting and picking up all the debris throughout the city, we're trying to maintain a, a consistent rate that the, our payers are customers are paying. So if we were to increase those services to collect waste from, from all parts of the city and and collect, um, have everybody bring their, their waste to us, we'd have to increase the rates to account for what the amount of uh, solid waste that's coming into our facilities. Okay, thank you. I, I hope that you would advertise that any recyclable material, um, they don't need a, a water bill. So that would encourage people to drop off. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. We'll go ahead and, and um, increase our advertisement about that, our promotions. Um, our next uh, guest is Jose. Jose had his hand raised. Jose, go ahead and unmute yourself. Yes, thank you for taking my call and this. Thank you for having this conference. It's a it's a big, big help. Uh, totally understand the struggles you're going through, especially with the, you know, all the employees that are going through COVID and we pray for their recovery. Mm -hmm. But in regard to this conference, I have uh, just two questions. Number one, on your website, is there a breakdown of the gray bin fee that actually shows the breakdown of each uh, category you mentioned? And number two, if the collections uh, of the gray bin fee remain, um, just looking at maybe uh, December and January, perhaps, we're looking at maybe 62 thousand to sixty four thousand in that savings what would happen to the, those mm -hmm. funds um uh, i don't believe there's um I'd, I'd have to go back and check our website to see if what's listed under the gray bin uh 19 fee I, i'm unsure if, if uh, that's listed on our website i'll have to 
check that and and get back to you on that if you'd like mm -hmm. to provide your information so we could let you know about I understand that. that it's not I understand it's not printed on the bill just to you know save space, but I was just wondering if it's perhaps on the website. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll look into that. I'm I'm not quite sure. It's been a while since I, I've I've searched that on the website, but that's something I'll look into and and maybe pro, uh, provide that information online. That way, um, everybody knows what what's going into the uh, the mm -hmm. fees that they're paying uh, as part of their uh, water bill. And then, yes. um, and then on on the savings part, uh, you know, um, the savings goes back to uh, you know the, the different operations that we have equipment repairs. Uh, you know our, our CCS sites, di different items like that. We we try to invest all the money, any savings that we do have in environmental services, back into our sites, okay. back into our facilities. Yeah, and I'm not complaining about the fee. I just, I mean, obviously there's other bills to pay and other stuff to do, but I was just curious on that. Mm -hmm. I appreciate your time, and I think you guys are doing a great job. I understand the stresses you guys are under. Obviously, you know, having these conferences for us to. Uh, ask you all these questions, so I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Up next, we have uh, Ms. Murphy. If you could go ahead and unmute yourself, you're the next guest um, with the hand raised. OK, thank you. I, I just have a couple of questions. First of all, I understand your situation. I, it's tough times for all of us. Uh, the uh, My first question is, if, if we take stuff to the, one of the recycling centers, does it have to be sorted, or can we just be, I know it has to be loose, but can we can we just put it in a container like we you know like you like like our trash can only not as big and take it? Do we have to sort it in any way? Uh, no, ma'am. Uh, our, uh, okay. our 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 recycling is single source, so everything can be put in the same okay. container at, at the recycling facility. Do the sorting. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Second, if we put recycling things, because I mean I'm not going to be able to take everything to the recycling center, it still needs to be treated as trash. Then, right? It needs to be put in a bag. Uh, yes. If, okay. if you are to put it in your gray bin, we ask that you. Uh, Bag the materials that yeah. way uh, when and during collections so they don't you, fly you, you you it would just be treated as trash at that point. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate all your hard work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, up next we have Dave. Dave has uh, another question. Dave, do you want to go ahead and un un unmute yourself? And then after Dave, we have um, Jackie Rodriguez Leeper. Um, Jackie, do you want to go ahead and ask your question while we wait for Dave? Yes. Thank you. You're talking about a savings uh, that you're making $7,800 a week, right? By not recycling? Uh, correct. We're not paying the process if you have the Freeman recycling facility. Okay, so where's that money going? That's a savings. Where's that money going? L like I mentioned earlier, you know, either it, uh, we try to invest it back into our facilities or we uh, it goes into the enterprise fund as part of the city. Okay. So then you're saying too that you have a monthly, weekly fee of, of vehicle maintenance and everything else, right? Um, what do you mean monthly, weekly fee? Well, that, you're that, saying that, that you have to keep your trucks up, you know, when you have drivers to pay and everything else, right? Yes, that's part of the $19. Okay. So that is nothing new to us. We've been paying that. You pay that every year, every month. That's part of your yearly budget, correct? Correct. OK, so why are you saying that you're saving yourself seventy eight hundred dollars a month and you can't afford to give us some kind of break? On recycling, uh, it's, because, it's a, oh, by the way, hold on. Oh, by the okay. way, you're also making money on our recycles. I'm not foolish enough to think you're not, because if you weren't making money, you wouldn't do it. Actually, sir, we're not making money on the recycling fee, you know, to landfill um, trash, it, it typically costs us about $26 a ton to landfill trash. To recycle a ton of material, it's upwards above $100 a ton. 
all we're doing is providing a service. You know, recycling is not something many people make money off of. Maybe the the people that run the the sorting facilities they they can make profit off of them. But recycling is typically not a money maker for many of the cities. It's more of a we're we're trying to protect the environment and help 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 out with that. You know, there's there's really not money being made. Like I mentioned, we collect the the material and then everything gets taken to the Freedman Recycling Company. You know, we we try to do this uh, to better our community. It's not something we're we're making money off of, and that's what the material goes to Freeman, and they're the ones that you know sell it and and determine where that uh, material goes. And you you mentioned the the, the seven eight hundred we're saving weekly. If you break it down by the hundred and ninety thousand customers that we have um, on a weekly basis that we collect from, we're saving about each customer nineteen cents probably on not performing the recycling. So it it does make it you know. It's not a big savings that we're seeing. You know, 7,800 does sound like a lot of money, but if you break it down between the 190,000 customers that we have, it's really not a huge savings that we're seeing. So again, if it's not a money maker, you wouldn't be doing it. Why? Uh, well, you know, we, we do it to to help the environment out there. That that's the 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 process is a recycling. It's to help better, um, not waste as much material. Make sure that we're recycling. You know, we we uh, we're still paying for some of the processing of the of the material coming coming to the CCS. You know, we're still gathering the material. The, the recycling program is not making money. It's not about making money for the city of El Paso. It's about doing better for the environment. It it also adds on to the savings and as far as airspace at the landfill. So by us providing the recycling material and diverting some of that material that would normally go over to the landfill, you know, I mean, you're you're saving some airspace where it prolongs the life of the landfill. So that way we don't have to look to, you know, traveling farther out, transporting um, your waste and stuff like that. That does increase your rates if we have to travel further out. So by recycling, we're reducing or expanding the life of the landfill. So that's one of the reasons also that we provide that service. But again, we, we don't make any money off of it. And as part of, uh, you oh, know, uh, our, our director, our, our director, Alan Smythe, provided an update to city council this morning. You know, what we have in the last 10 years of doing recycling, we've saved about a about a year's worth of airspace, uh, you know, uh, over the over the last 10 years, you know, not a year's worth, but, a, um, you know, we get, yeah, about a year's worth because we, uh, sorry, we uh, dispose of about close to 400,000 tons of trash on a yearly basis at the Greater El Paso landfill. Uh, we recycle about anywhere from 25 to 30 thousand tons a year. So, you know, over the past 10 years, we've saved about a year of airspace at our Greater El Paso landfill. Okay, so now you're asking me to drive my recycles to the collection point, right? Um, if you choose to recycling, yes, sir. Okay, but if, if I choose not to, that's going to increase the landfill space. Yes, sir. It's only during this uh, suspension time. Well, but you don't know when the suspension is going to end. I, I understand, but we're looking, like I said, we're going to reevaluate every 30 days and hopefully we'll be able to return back to our, our regular services, hopefully within the next couple of months. Okay, my recycling has not been picked up in a month. So my recycle bin, even with the barks is broken down and all the cans and everything, it's overflowing. So I understand you want me to drive it there, but you're asking me to take one time out of my schedule to my gas to solve your problem. Uh, I, I think I should be some kind of uh, restitution in some way. I, I understand your concern, sir, but uh, currently we're not pr providing that. And like I mentioned before, if you want, the recycled material can go in your grave bin as part of your, your regular trash collection. Okay. All right. Well, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And we appreciate your concerns. Um, I just want everybody to understand that this is temporary. Um, it's, it's not something that we want it to do. It's just an unfortunate situation that we're in due to the pandemic as well. And so um, we're, we're doing the best that we can. We know that it we we know that uh, a lot of people recycle and they and they do a really good job at it. And, and, and we don't want to discourage people from recycling, but we also understand that it's not easy for everyone to get to our dropout sites. 
And so if you can do it, um, we would appreciate it if you take it there. If you can't, we understand that it may be necessary to um, put it in your grave bin. And, and with that, we have a caller who dialed in who is not muted. Um, the number is 227. It starts with 227. If you want to go ahead and ask your question, um, uh, somebody who dialed in by the phone number of 915-227-6491. Hello? Yes, yes. ma'am. Ed? I, I don't understand how this is working. Uh, my computer did not download the thing. I didn't even realize that you could see my phone number. I don't understand what is our right to put in the, well, no longer in the blue bins, but in the recycling at the citizen collection centers. Um, I understand from reading many reports that most plastic is not recycled now. If people spend a lot of time and water washing it out and then it just goes to the landfill in this desert environment, that is very foolish. What uh, aluminum foil and aluminum cans? What, what's that? Hard, what oh. else can be successfully recycled right now? What, uh, the, um, what we currently accept that uh, as part of our curbside recycling program is a cardboard, paper, Aluminum, aluminum cans, uh, plastics, uh, one through seven. Uh, what we ask for people not to put in the recycling bins is a uh, shredded paper that is not accepted at the recycling facility and then uh, plastic sheeting material like uh, plastic wrap and different items like that. Um, the the uh, shredded paper and the, the plastic sheeting, uh, usually they plug the, the equipment at the recycling facility, so that's not accepted. Oh, no, it's just... What, I mean, things like these little itty bitty coffee pods that uh, are made for coffee machines, uh, et cetera. Numerous reports have said that those are not actually being recycled. What size plastic, big water jugs, obviously, what else can actually be picked up and sold by the Friedman people? And what is actually just going into landfill because it is no longer recyclable? Like like They're I mentioned, really helpful oh, to have an honest list of that. Um, yes, uh, and we, we do have a full list at our, our city website under uh, environmental services. And if you go under the recycling tab, they do have a full list of materials on there. But like I mentioned before, plastics uh, one through seven are accepted at the Friedman facility. Um, I, I do hear a lot of people say that a lot of the material that uh, goes to Friedman ends up at the landfill. And that's mainly because of a contamination rate. Um, uh, the contamination rate that we've seen lately is anywhere from 30 to 33 percent. And if we, if the material is contaminated, Freeman will not accept it, and it'll actually be a place in a container and take it to the Greater El Paso landfill and dispose of there because of the contamination. So we ask that people place as clean of a material into the recycling bin as possible, and also when it gets taken to our citizen collection sites. In addition okay. to the materials that you could use as part of your curbside at our five citizen collection sites, we also um, accept glass bottles for recycling and uh, we crush them at our Pendale site and the, and the glass materials are, are taken, uh, are provided back to the residents or anybody that wants to collect any of the, the glass crushings that we, uh, we, we perform at that site. So the official statement is that all plastics one through seven, no matter how small, if they are clean, are recycled and yet, Numerous national reports have said this is not the case any longer. Who is buying? I'm just mystified. I'll go on putting them in, but I, I don't understand how this can be. Yeah, yes, I, I understand that. What is uh, recyclable is actually determined by the Freeman Recycling uh, Company, and they've let us know that they're still accepting uh, plastics one through seven. Like I said, uh, the only thing where uh, they will not accept is plastic film and also the uh, the 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 plastic bags that you get at like a Walmart or or any of the stores they they do not accept that because those tend to fly off, clog the machines, and different items like they that. Go Albertsons or somewhere. So, yes. Yeah. And then okay. also, um, like like mentioned before, we ask that you don't uh, you do not bag the recyclables when you do use a blue container. When you go to the CCS sites, we ask that the material is loose. Uh, that right. way, um, if the material is bagged, the Freeman Recycling will actually look at that as a uh, contaminated material or 
a waste and it'll be thrown away. Right, and also uh, no styrofoam, no pizza boxes. Uh, those won't, those are the major things that we see through right. recycling containers, no styrofoam. And um, you'd be surprised at what we come across. Um, people think that we compost, uh, we don't. So yard waste and those type of deals, you also see inside the containers. But um, like Nick was saying, um, plastics one through seven, uh, no styrofoam, no shredded paper, no film, uh, those type of deals. Only, and, I, and let me rephrase, uh, emphasize that only at the citizen collection stations um, do, can you recycle the glass. At any of the five citizen collection stations, you can recycle the glass. So once we resume back on the curbside, uh, please do not put any glass bottles in the blue bins because uh, that's contamination. So only at the sites where we, there's where the customers can uh, recycle the glass. Okay. Okay, thank, thank you. I don't see any other hand raised. I believe the hand that was raised by um, the name Jackie Rodriguez Leeper uh, has already been answered. Sir, unless you have a separate question, go ahead and ask it. I encourage everyone to um, use the icon at the top of your screen to ask a, a question. There's a hand icon at the top. There's also a text box icon at the top right next to it. Um, you can use that to ask us a question via the chat system. Um, we have Jose. Jose, if you have a question, go ahead and ask. Yes, yeah, just a quick question. Uh, this Friedman company, uh, are their rules uh, pretty much in line with what other cities nationwide have to deal with in regards to, you know, plastic and what cannot be in their machines? Um, yes, every, every recycling facility sets a, a guidelines that they work with the, the city that provides recycling for them. So they provide uh, what material they could receive, what they're processing, how they'd like to receive it, you know, a single stream or if they'd like it separated. Um, it's, 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 it's a contract between the city and the recycling facilities where they determine what materials and how the materials can be brought in to their facility. So do, do I mean, you're saying that how do they measure up with other cities? Like, I mean, is it in line with as far as their rules? Um, yes, from, from, from what I've seen uh, with other cities, uh, other partners uh, that I've talked with, they 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 typically fall in line. There are cities that accept uh, additional materials, but um, for the most part, it's cardboards, plastics, uh, aluminum cans that are the main uh, recyclables that most uh, recycling facilities receive. A lot of the, the plastic bags uh, aren't receiving the plastic film. A lot of it is market driven when we're coming up with the uh, the contracts with the, the recycling facilities, but yes, they do align with the, the majority of the cities. Thank you. Thank you. And and Nick, while we wait for, um, just in case anyone else has another question, do you want to go over the disposal options again? Um, there are four disposal options if you want to go ahead and share those. Um, I know that we list them in the chat. Uh, in the chat system because uh, uh, there were questions in there. Yes, uh, your 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 disposal options for recycling material, and I shouldn't say disposal, there's also storage. Uh, one, you could store your material in your blue bin broken down, or if you have any available room in your uh, garage or one of your storage sheds, uh, um, you could store it until we resume the, the recycling program. Uh, two, you could place it in your gray bin. We ask that you bag the material that goes into the gray bin. Um, and uh, place it in there and it will be disposed of at the landfill so that it will be disposed of there at the landfill if you place it in your gray bin uh three we if you take it to one of our five citizen collection sites and our citizen collection sites i mentioned before are located uh, throughout the city they'll accept any recyclable recyclable material without a water bill and without an id and if you want to bring multiple containers if you're helping your neighbors out or if you're assisting with collecting recycling in your in your neighborhood, they will accept all the material that you bring into the sites. We've added additional containers uh, at, at the sites to make sure there's plenty of room to help assist with the, the wait times and the lines. And we're glad to see there's been such a, a demand for recycling in the city, bringing it to our citizen collection sites. And four is if uh, you're, um, you could take it also to the Greater El Paso landfill and it will be, it'll be disposed of there as trash and buried uh, at the landfill. That'd be your fourth option. Thank you, Nick. 
Um, and we had some callers who dialed in. They didn't use the link. If you have a question, go ahead and unmute yourself by dialing star six. Um, if you've called into this um, meeting, go ahead and unmute yourself. If you have a question by pressing star six. I believe we have. Um, go ahead, we can hear you. I think your number is 915. Oh, okay. it's yes, ma'am. I'm just wondering, um, are you guys currently hiring um, more drivers um, in case like some of the people, you know, might have like the long term that they might be out for a while? Yes, we're, we're, we're constantly in a, in a recruiting basis uh, for drivers. We're always, um, um, we, we do have a, a training program that lasts uh, six to eight weeks for our drivers, but we're, we're always constantly recruiting and, and starting those training programs throughout the year. It's, you know, it's just difficult to uh, uh, keep drivers a lot of the times, you know, uh, the position is very difficult. Uh, drivers start their mornings, uh, they have to be at work by 4.30 in the morning and they do work 10 hour days collecting anywhere from 1,000 to 1,500 cans on a daily basis. But yes, we are in a constant recruiting. We currently have uh, uh, four in our Rhodes Academy right now that are training to become drivers. Okay, that was my question, thank you. Thank you. We have another caller who dialed in um, the area code. I think you've unmuted yourself. 915-346 are the first digits. Go ahead and ask your question. Yes, yes, ma'am. I just want to say to both of you that you have done an outstanding job. I, I want to tell you that I applaud this, your service and this web, Zoom webinar. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we have no other hands raised. If you have a question and you logged in through the link, go ahead and unmute yourself. Um, we ask that you be respectful and if somebody else has asked a question ahead of you, if you wait for them to have their question answered. Um, but if you have a question, now is your opportunity. If you don't, um, we encourage you to contact us at our at our phone number tomorrow or in the following days. The number is 915-212-6000. Um, up next, we have Karina Cecilio. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Are you able to hear me? Yes. Um, I just had a question. I saw all the different options and I'm just having some difficulty trying to make it to the collection site. So I was wondering as an option, would there be like an option where, you know, I've stored as much as you can and I have capacity. Would there be a way to put a sign or something on the blue bin so that it could be treated like a gray bin and unfortunately go into the dump site? Because there's just you know, trying to not go to the stores. Unfortunately, you know, you have to order so many things online and you just kind of get to a point where you can only borrow so much of your neighbor's mm -hmm. uh, trash cans. So I was wondering if that would be an option if once a month uh, or something like that, you can treat that blue bin as a gray bin temporarily and if that can be picked up and taken to the disposed of. Uh, no, we, we try to discourage that because then it builds habits with the, the customers that the blue bin is a, a, a trash bin also because that, that's our main uh, problem uh, that we've seen at the city with the, the recycling bin is a lot of our residents that 30% contamination, a lot of it has to do with not just a couple items in the blue bin. It's they, a lot of our residents treat that as a as additional trash can and you know that that's what's hurting our, our contamination rate when we take the material to the Freeman Recycling. So. We, we try to discourage not using the blue can as a gray can so we don't build any habits where in the future that may happen because if residents uh, see that, you know, um, it might build that, oh, okay, they're taking it as, as extra trash. So we're, we, we tried to not encourage that from happening. And no, we're, we're not collecting any blues. Um, that way people, uh, when we start collecting blues, we want people to know it's because the recycling program has resumed. Okay, and thank you. Thank you. As Nick had mentioned earlier, if you're unable to go to a drop off site and you have extra waste, you do have the option of calling us to request an extra pickup, um, but it would be for your gray bin and, and there's a fee attached to that. Uh, but it, it's certainly something to consider if you have extra waste. 
And you did mention we have the option to opt out of the recycling, correct? Correct. Uh, currently, um, for all, all new uh, recycling uh, customers, they are we uh, at the time before this uh, suspension happened, we were offering a an opt in class. That way, all new residents would know exactly what was uh, went into the recycling bin. So, and but currently, we do have an uh, if you do want to opt out, that is something that can be done where we would go and collect the the, the blue bin and you would opt out of the program. But if you were to want to recycle in the future, you would have to take the class and opt in back into the to the recycling program. I'm assuming that class would be online. Yes, all of them are currently be performed online, but they're they're suspended right now until we resume the recycling program. Do you have another question for us? Um, if anybody else has a question, this is your opportunity. Um, it's been about 45 minutes since we started the meeting. We will probably wrap up at about 630 or, or you know, a little bit sooner if nobody else has a question. But I do want to encourage you to um, contact us if you think of something tomorrow or the following weeks. Our number is 2126000. So, so you don't need to ask a question tonight, but if you do have uh, a question, you are free to contact us at another date as well. Um, we have a guest by the name of Aleman who's got their hand raised. Um, sir, you want or, or ma'am, do you want to go ahead and yes. unmute yourself? Um, I'm not sure if this question was already asked, and I'm sorry if it's a repeat. Um, I logged in a little late. Um, do you know what the cost is for an additional grade bin and what the turnaround time is for delivery on those grade bins? Because, like the other people have mentioned, you know. Um, the recycle and just the trash in itself is getting to be more just because of the whole COVID. So I'm having a hard time just using one can. I feel like I'm going to need another great can soon. Uh, the uh, charge for additional gray bin is $19 a month and the turnaround is usually anywhere from seven to 10 business days. Our guy, our, uh, our containers, a uh, group has been able to usually get them out there between five and seven business days on an average. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Um, does anybody else have a question? If you dialed in, press star six to unmute yourself if you have a question. Um, in the meanwhile, we're going to go ahead and display our um, locations of our citizen collection stations, and that way you have those addresses there. I believe, um, ma'am, did you have a separate question? I see a hand up. Aleman. Oh no, I'm not sure how how to take it off. Let me see. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. I don't know. I'll take it down. Don't worry. Thank you so much. I'll go ahead and take it down. Um, we've had a couple of guests that just joined us again. Uh, if you have a question, go ahead and unmute yourself. We have our citizen collection stations, which are our drop off sites for extra recyclables and extra household waste up on the screen. So I'll, I'll go through this again. Um, we, we have our five sites uh, in the northeast at 4501 Hondo Pass, and you'll be taking uh, the entrance is off of Stahala and um, uh, to enter the, the northeast site. Our Mission Valley uh, site is at 1034 Pendale. Uh, we have on the east side at 3510 Confederate, which is off of uh, Turner and Lee. It's a little hidden back in the neighborhood. Our central site is uh, 2492 Harrison. It's located next to the GCC or GCG, uh, the, the mining plant there in McCallaghan Canyon. And on the west side at 121 Atlantic, which is next to our municipal service center off of Donovan. Uh, hours are Tuesday through Saturday, 8 to 4 p.m. And like Tammy mentioned, our ESD call center for all questions that we didn't, we weren't able to answer tonight, or if you have any, if it pops up in your mind later, later tomorrow or anytime, uh, you could call 2126000 and we operate from 8 to 5 p.m. on Monday through Friday. Nick, we have a caller um, that has their button unmuted, 915346. Do you have another question for us?
Again, that number starts with 915-346. You are unmuted. Um, I'm not sure if you had a question for us. And um, if anybody else has a question, this is your opportunity. Uh, again, we will probably be wrapping up the meeting shortly um, at 6.30, it'll be an hour. If you have any follow-up questions, you're welcome to dial, um, call us by dialing 212-6000. So um, unless we have any other further questions, Nick, do you wanna just kind of summarize everything from the presentation so we can wrap up the meeting? Uh, yes, I uh, just want to thank everybody for calling in. Um, we understand these are difficult times when it comes to recycling. It, this is something that we we try to avoid as much as possible, but just, you know, um, losing drivers to, you know, COVID and different different illnesses. And it's been difficult. We, we're trying our best to um, do everything as possible to return recycling as soon as possible. Like I mentioned before, we'll be examining this every 30 days. So at the beginning of January, we'll be examining this to see uh, we, uh, the potential of bringing this back. Um, this is just a suspension. We have a 10 year uh, recycling contract with Freeman Recycling through 2030. So uh, we're not getting rid of the recycling program. We're just currently suspending the curbside portion of it. All material, we're accepting it at all our CCS sites. Reminder, no ID, no uh, water bill is needed to take recycling on any of those sites. We ask though, if you are taking recycling and trash, they will ask you for your water bill and your ID for the trash portion of the material that you are taking to our CCS sites. So that the, just in case there's some confusion there, they will be asking you for that if you have a combination of both. Um, if you forget your water bill, they will let you, they will allow you to dispose of your recyclable material, but we ask that uh, you do bring your water bill and your ID. You can also uh, download a, a pass for the CCS site per our ESD Works for You app. Um, if you download that app, uh, you could report uh, missed collections, uh, any uh, recycling uh, questions. They, they have a recycling wizard that'll answer what can be recycled at our, uh, as part of our curbside program. Um, like I mentioned, it, you can download a CCS pass there. That way you could show at the front gate if you want to take any trash. That usually ma makes a movement a little at the sites a little bit quicker. And like I mentioned before, we understand there have been long lines lately this past week as part as at our CCS sites, but We've added additional containers and we're um, we're running each side at full staff. So we're trying to get uh, customers in and out as quick as possible. Thank you, Nick. And we have um, a guest who joined us um, maybe about 30 seconds ago. If you have a question, we were about to wrap up the meeting. Um, this is your opportunity. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Um, Ms. Nava, if you have a question, go ahead and unmute yourself right now. Yes, I needed to know. Does does the the recyclables have to come into in the bin? Because I can't fit the bin in my car. Uh, no, no, um, no. You could bring uh, you you could bring the the recyclables anyway. And we we mentioned to folks before you could even bring the recyclables bag bag to the facility. But we just ask that you unbag bag them when you're placing them in our compactor containers. That way, they're not bagged when they're going to the facility. Okay, that was my question. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, Nick, do you want to clarify on um, what's necessary to take to a CCS if you're dropping off recyclables? There's there's no documentation and uh, no, no documentation required. Just uh, inform uh, the uh, front gate operator that you're bringing recyclables. Uh, again, he'll as we do every vehicle that enters our CCS sites, he'll check your vehicle to make sure it is just recycling, but there's no documentation required. We will just perform the check and they'll direct you to where you could uh, place your recyclables for, for transport to the Freeman facility. Thank you, Nick. And thank you everybody for taking time out of your evening for joining us today. We know that this is a very important topic to you. It's an important topic to us. Um, for us, if you have any other questions, feel free to contact us tomorrow or next week or any other day, our phone number is 915-212-6000. Again, thank you so much for joining us. And this is not your last opportunity for asking us questions. So if you have any other questions, feel free to contact us online at elpasotexas.gov slash ESD or, or by calling us at 915-212-6000. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Jesus, for all your um, 
comments? Has it, uh, did you have a question? Or do you want to share something? You just wave in. Thank you everyone for participating. Thank Appreciate you. It.